everyone, and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails, the weekly podcast that helps you grow your business, improve your life, and enjoy yourself along the way. I'm your host, Alan Langer, and every week we try to bring you the best thought leaders, the best business leaders, and the best minds out there to help you succeed in business and in life. So sit back, relax, grab your pad, your pen, and your favorite beverage, and enjoy the next episode of Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. This is episode 15 or 16. I don't remember, actually, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> they are running together, but I'm having a ball doing this show. And I've got really, you, you know, one of the things I, I, I'm proud of this show is we're not just like dry marketing and sales all the time. We kind of go outside the box a little bit. And tonight, we are going outside the box. Your guy is going to love this guest. His name is Al Gettler. And Al has almost uh, over three decades of, of media experience. And what I mean by that, he's been a publisher for 25 years. He's published magazines, uh, newspapers, websites. He, his current company is called a revenue producing company where they actually generate revenue for different companies. And I'm going to have him explain that. But he also has a little trick, uh, not a little trick. He has a little surprise for us. <laughs> and especially if you're listening to this podcast on Apple or Spotify or something, you can listen to it, but then you're going to need to check out the YouTube video and you'll find out why in a few minutes. So Al Gettler, welcome to the podcast. Alan, thank you so much. It's such a, an honor to be here, getting to know you the past, uh, I guess, what, month, month and a half? This is yeah, fantastic. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, been fun. Now, Al is on the, uh, I, I've mentioned my, my Friday networking group quite a few times on this podcast and Al joined about a month ago and uh, it's been fun and we've gotten to know each other. He's a good guy. We share the same name, so that makes it cool. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Al, tell us a little bit about, uh, you have such a, a, a vast career uh, or a long career and a lot of experience, not only in sales, but managing people and stuff. So, give us a little synopsis of how you got to where you are and what makes you who you are to help our, our audience understand. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Alan, too, we'll, we'll, we'll stay on the theme of sales, right? Yep. I started selling uh, when I was probably uh, maybe just early in the double digits nine or 10 or 11 years old, I remember there was a thing called student leadership sales. And you'd write in and you'd get greeting card catalogs, right? And I used to go door to door selling greeting cards in my, uh, my town in New Jersey where I grew up. Wow. Uh, and literally you'd knock on the door, say, hi, Mrs. Johnson. I have Christmas cards. I have, you know, variety of birthday cards. I had this, I had that. And what you were doing was selling these cards. You weren't making money. You'd earn points and you'd pick, you know, Prizes out of a catalog. Which oh, yeah, yeah. I remember impressive. when I did that, like in grammar school, you'd sell candy bars and you, you, you yeah. won a prize. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah except yeah. I wasn't doing it through the school. I was doing it directly with this company. Wow. They sent me a whole sales kit and a whole bit, and they taught me how to sell. So, I mean, my <laughs> sales career started as early as that. It's crazy. Wow. Before we go on, I just I just remembered this is marketing and sales over cocktails. What are you uh, What are you uh, enjoying? I have a red wine uh, mix tonight here from California. A little Merlot. Uh, what else was in here? It's a little Sauvignon uh, mixed. Just a nice red wine. Well, here's a little that. virtual cheers right to the... Cheers, right. everybody. Cheers, cheers to you. you. There you go. Us, so. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I love those stories. You know, one of the, you just reminded me of one of the jobs I had, which was crazy. I worked for... This was in high school. I worked for a uh, tractor-trailer training company. And, and, there, and all I... It, it wasn't really selling. It was convincing people to leave the cards in the store. You, you yes. remember back in the day, you'd walk in I, and said, become 100%. a tractor trailer driver. Yep. So all of those cards, what they would do is I take a stack of cards and every guy that was like me, we would, we would have a color. So we would draw with a marker across right, the cards. Right. And yep. then when the card came in, we got credit for it. And when the there card came go. in, we would get paid whatever it was, a dollar or something. Yeah. But yeah. we also got like $2 a store. So we had it. So I would just walk up and down Main Street and say, hey, can I leave these cards? So I guess that was my first sales job, I would think. But um, Well, you know what? Cool. It's incredible, too. You, you, you really earn your chops that way. And, um, you know, when we're kids, we're less inhibited. We're, we're willing to go in there and start talking. And, and we shake it off a lot faster when we get rejected, right? It's not that right. big a deal. Because right. the biggest thing I find with salespeople is, you know, especially when they're, they're new in their sales career, but even very experienced salespeople, rejection is so hard. Whether you're, you're working on a pipeline pr 
project to sell a turbine engine that takes 18 months and you finally get <laughs> to the point and, you know, and, and then boom, the sale doesn't happen. Or you're literally going into a store and trying to put cards in there right next to the batch books that used to you draw a picture. Remember you go to the yeah, drawing yeah. college. You, <laughs> <laughs> you remember, you remember. I remember, I remember um, my, my grandmother before she passed, she said to me, she goes, you know how the we were sitting down one day. She was ninety four when, when she passed, and this was she was probably ninety one when she said this to me. She goes, you know how I've noticed the world has changed, and I said, how? She goes, when you were younger, I would sit in the afternoon and watch TV, and I'd see all of these ads about, you know, go to tra- tractor trailer school, go to beauty school, go to now all the ads are, if you're in an accident, let's sue that person. Yeah, all lawyers. <laughs> Such a commentary, isn't it? You know, isn't it? And she was hundred yeah. percent right. Yep. And we used to have Wilfred Brimley too selling us oatmeal. May you yeah. rest in peace. May you rest in peace. So, oh my diabetes. god, we are so dating ourselves right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's the golden age, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. So, before we get into your stuff, I do. I I, I am dying with anticipation. So, I want you to show. So, we have a surprise for the audience. And again, if you're listening, definitely go to YouTube and check this out because Mr. Gettler is also a ventriloquist. And well, yeah, and you, and, and you boxed this so nicely for me just now because you talked about, we talked about a couple of days, talked about when I was, when I was younger and, and selling, you talked about afternoon television. When I was a kid growing up in the New York City area, afternoon television was chock full of great after school shows. Yes, and so it was. That's, yeah. So that's where I learned this, this art of ventriloquism. But I started when I was eight years old, and we go back to selling greeting cards. I started performing professionally when I was 12. I was at the Piermont Fire Department for my dad, a friend of his, and did a show. The guy handed me 20 bucks. I had turned <laughs> professional right there. <laughs> you're no longer an amateur when you got the money. I was no longer an amateur at all, you know? <laughs> and, and it's funny. You're telling people, go see the video. Who is one of the most famous ventriloquists in the world still today? Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy made their fame on radio. So it's kind of incredible. If I turn my camera around, the commercial aspect of our life, I have shelves full of artifacts. Uh, Edgar Bergen, the ventriloquist, was in a, and Candace Bergen, uh, you know, is his daughter. Edgar Bergen was an amazing businessman. He learned to put the face and image of his dummy on everything he possibly could and just made millions off of that. You know, wow. his best friend was Walt Disney. Go, so go figure that. But wait a minute. Let me just give me a second. Floyd, yeah, what do you want? Come here for a second. I want to introduce you to somebody. Who is it? It's somebody here. Just come on up here. Who is it? It's hold on a second. I just don't want to come out here for anybody. Just get up here. Oh, oh hey, how are you? Hey, Floyd, you, we're, we're wearing the same shirt tonight. Look at that. I think we are. Yeah, yeah you, you <laughs> shot in the kids section of Target. Come see you <laughs> Kind of the weirdo. If you ask me, I don't know where he gets that from. Yeah, this is Alan. Hey, Alan, how are you? Floyd, how are you? What are you? What are you up to tonight? Ah, uh, that that three feet, I guess, something like that. There, yeah, not that tall. <laughs> Very nice well, to meet you. you. Good to meet you, man. We were talking about uh, about sales and marketing. Alan's an expert. He is, huh? Yeah, he is. Well, that's cool. Yeah. What are you an expert at? Girls? Go, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I met his daughter before. I think she likes me. You do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Floyd, she's only 12, so back off. <laughs> I'm not much older than me. That's right. There you are. I like older women. You like older women. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Floyd, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see here. Yeah. Unless you've been together here, how long now? We've been together a long time now. Floyd and I started our partnership in 1979. Yeah. You're really? Old. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I tell you what, I, I, you know, when you talk about kind of forming your life, most ventriloquists that I know had a break where they got to perform a lot and learn their craft. And so when you talk to my friend Jeff Dunham or you talk to my friend Jay Johnson, who some people m- might remember from Soap, all of us had this opportunity either a summer or two to uh, perform a lot. I was performing for a... Um, a, a, a contracted deal where I went to playgrounds all around New Jersey and performed every single day, two, three, four times a day. Yeah. So we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Yeah, that's right. So that's you did that, I, Floyd, you did that with, 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 with your buddy I did. Al? I was sick of kids, done. No more kids. No, no more kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually back then, and that's, and that's what happened to us, Alan. You know, uh, I would do birthday parties uh, for very, very wealthy people in places like Alpine and Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. And yes, knows uh, that. I'm a New Jersey guy, so I know exactly yeah, what you're talking there about. there you go. So I flew these giant houses, and one day a guy walks up to me after a, a birthday party for, for, you know, for kids, for a family party, and he says, hey, my wife is turning 40. Would you be interested in doing her birthday party in a couple of weeks? And I went, 
wow, adults, huh? Uh-huh. And, and we didn't look back. No, we did not look back. Yeah. We wanted to do <laughs> lots of stuff. After that. Yeah, yeah. Atlantic City, Las Vegas, all that stuff. Yeah, we did it all. So wow. all the while having a media career. Yeah, that's how we did it. That's how we did it. Yep. Wow. So so Floyd, did you get did you get frequent flyer miles as well as Al or, or you were just like yeah, hiding in sure. a sure. I was down below, I was stowed away, and he was sitting in his seat there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell him technically what we do? Yeah, well, what well, technically what we do is uh, Floyd's body goes in the suitcase below. Yeah, my head goes up top there or, or right under his seat there. That's right. We keep that very, very uh careful yeah yeah because he's an instrument i am yeah oh I fact, you know, so, the, so the head comes apart from the body and they travel like separately this, to put that down don't do that yeah Look sorry, at no. that. <laughs> yeah, sorry you're talking about it all right it's fine yeah <laughs> by the way floyd is b- born in new jersey as well too that's right i was carved in new jersey you were yep by a guy named alan seamott who lived in new jersey as well yeah so wow a whole bunch of jersey connections here there certainly are yeah can i go sit down now i'm sure you can we're gonna bring somebody else out in a few minutes as we talk about just kind of you know, he's a story brand expert. He is? I like that stuff, yeah. It's pretty good story stuff, brand, Alan? What's huh? that? You do story brand stuff? That's I do I story you. brand stuff. I do a lot of things. I yeah. Of well, things. you know what's cool about that is I have to have the story to be a character. That's right. It's really kind of connected. For me yes. to create these characters, they have to have stories and backgrounds. Yeah, and that's how he does it. That's how I do it. Yeah. All right, wow. man. I got to go. All right, Floyd. Nice meeting you, man. Thanks, I'm gonna go for, thanks for joining shirt. us on the show tonight. I really enjoyed meeting you. I'm going to buy a new shirt. Now that I see it on you, it doesn't look so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely looks better on you. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye, All right, you go back down there. All right. There you go. Good <laughs> so, yeah, I've been, you know, so you talk about sales again, right? I was 12 years old. I started doing this professionally, and I had to sell myself and, and get moms to hire me for birthday parties. And so that was a whole other aspect of developing my little business. I had this little business. Most people were cutting grass and delivering newspapers. I was doing birthday parties. You were doing so. birthday parties. So tell us how you went from, you kept your ventriloquist career right. as well as you got into the media career, right? You were yeah, doing well, actually, you know, I went, went to college for theater. I was going to be a cop all throughout high school. Didn't do that. Went to theater uh, for college when I got out. Of course, you know, hey, what are you going to do with that, right? So I needed a car <laughs> and I saw an ad in a newspaper, my local paper, that said, come work for the newspaper and get a car as part of the deal. So I, I ended up actually starting off uh, managing newspaper girls and boys and, and moms that had these garages where kids picked up their newspapers. I was called a district manager. It's the best damn job I've ever had, Alan. No I got to ride around all day, uh, hang out with, uh, with young people. But most importantly, the thing I love the most is I got to teach them how to sell. It all comes wow. back to sales again. Yeah. I, there are probably kids right now, I say kids are in their, in their late 40s that had careers on Wall Street because of what they learned uh, out with me doing newspapers. That's when you learn it, yeah. You, you yeah, don't, you don't learn it in, yeah. You don't learn it in a classroom, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was really kind of a cool, a cool thing. So, so I go through media and then I've been doing the ventriloquism all along. My wife, Nancy, and I have three girls. My two older ones, uh, you know, used to see dad pick up his suitcase and go out every Every Saturday morning, come back Sunday night, give mom a wad of cash and, you know, go to work the next day. That's, <laughs> that's how I live my life. And then uh, when I started doing the corporate stuff, it got a little fancier and I, you know, do, started doing a lot more, you know, take nice trips with the family on Friday night, Saturday, do banquets, events, things like that. It was yeah, a lot of yeah, fun. yeah. So combined it all. But all along, I've had this, this dual, uh, you know, Alan, I kind of live my life by no one, no one really is one thing, you know? Yeah. You're not one thing. I've gotten to know you in a short time. You're got a, you're a multi-layer guy. I find people like us who have a lot going on. We're not bored ever, you know. No, that's for um, sure. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, and I'm not bragging. I'm not dropping names. But Jeff uh, Dunham and I have been friends for a long, long time. A lot of your listeners probably know who Jeff is. I, t- I was talking to Jeff when uh, when Stay at Home first started with COVID nineteen, and he said to me, Al, he said, you know, anybody that says they're bored is really not thinking it through. Because if you've ever said, I've always wanted to do whatever, yep. build a model airplane, write a book, learn how to do, you know, write poetry, photography, what better time to learn it than right now? You right. Know? And right. so true. So true. So. Well, that's a good segue because you, you're talking about, so your company is ANC Revenue, right? Yeah. ANC is a company that's been around for over 20 years. I was a client in the Boston area. Okay. I ran a group of newspapers and magazines north of Boston. It was called the North of Boston Media Group. And I, uh, I had a couple of sections of my paper that really were not doing very well. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't figure out why my staff couldn't figure out. I met this guy named Tim Dellinger. Tim came in, a uh, Southern guy, you know, uh, came in, met with me up there in New England and uh, 
sends a few salespeople in, consultants in, and killed it. I mean, absolutely killed it. So when I left my last newspaper, which was where I am up here in Burlington, Vermont, um, I live on islands north of Burlington, Vermont. Um, you know, I, I got a call from Tim one day and he said, why don't you come, you know, do this? And I thought, well, I don't know, you know, for flying around the country every week. And I love it. I mean, I just love it. I mean, I'm in wow. a different city right now. Of course, I'm not. I, I'm by Zoom, I am. But right, right, I'm in right. a different city every week when things are normal. I'm on an airplane every Saturday or, 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 or Sunday or Monday morning. And uh, my wife used to be sad that I would leave. And now when I come home on a Friday night, she asks me when I'm going to leave again. So, <laughs> so you're flying, <laughs> are you flying around to meet clients to sell them something? Or I'm like- flying around to both, both sell and to consult with uh, publishers advertising executives, figuring out what's going on and what we can do to develop revenue for them. Uh, we, use, we use entertainment guides as one of our best revenue builders. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the day, our grandmas read TV books, TV yep. guides. TV guides. But now, yeah, yeah, but now people stream primarily, right? Yep. I mean, I, I watch the streaming habits very, very closely. Do you know that during COVID, Wall Street Journal Harris poll, people increased their television viewing by up to four hours a day. I believe now, it. Yeah. Oh, let amazing. me let me tell you let me tell you the shocking thing. People are already watching t- TV for almost three hours a day. So, so that up means seven. <laughs> they got up to seven hours a day. And so <laughs> publishers say to us, How how is this gonna work? And then they call me up and they go, Oh my God, I, I've lost revenue during COVID everywhere but the entertainment guide. It's incredible. Wow. Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, people love it, you know, and my people know how to sell it. They go in, they, uh, they sell to businesses. They're very good at it. And usually within about half an hour, they walk out with, a, with, a, with an annual contract. So, and, and, and they're selling advertising on the streaming channels? Is that what they're doing? They're selling advertising for the local media company. You know? um, so primarily newspapers. But we okay. will sell you know, for anybody who's got media, we will sell for them. But we sell advertising, both print and digital is how we do it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And what so it requires kind of is... Well, I'm sorry. I no, no, you, um, you finish. Go ahead. Okay. What it requires is our sales team, an amazing group of people. They're on the road, some of them, five, six weeks at a time. Wow. Okay? So they are, you talk about people that are selling machines. They, when they get with, it, with an exciting bunch, I've got a great guy named Fred who works with us. Fred was at, a, was at a, a, a Geneva, New York. He was with a team. They had booked uh, 12 appointments a day. Okay. Young lady, Teresa there, we, we also can pay them cash for their accomplishments. One lady walked away with a big wad of money. She was telling me, I was just editing some video from her. She was getting him out there at 6, 6, you know, 6, 6.30 in the morning and starting selling that early. The wow. contractors, people that were going. I would, was teasing Fred, just go back to the hotel and change your clothes, dude. Don't worry about it. You don't need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> So selling, I think I just, I love selling and I love the fact that you love selling. So it's great. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, like I say, you know, I, I always tell people to find their happy place, you know, what makes their heart sing. And, and for me, it's writing and, and training and teaching and selling is, is a, always been a part of that for me. It's, I've always approached it from a, I don't know, educational standpoint rather than yeah. a making money standpoint, which, which is why I wrote my book. So. Well, but Alan, you're, you do something else too, which is, which is amazing. This is why I think I was so attracted to this when, when Dave England actually uh, you know, told me about it. You're a collector of people and, and, uh, and I do the same thing. We both collect a lot of people. And, um, <laughs> That's a good question. But, but, yeah, but the, the good thing about that is you, know, is you develop this network, you connect people constantly. What you've done with our Friday group is to connect people and it's what great salespeople do. You're not only there to sell something, you're there to be a partner to somebody. You're there to connect them to somebody who can get it done for them. You know, John Maxwell, John C. Maxwell, a great leadership writer, has a great quote. And he says, your network is your net worth. And I just yes. love that quote. And when I think about you, especially in what you're doing, you know, you're building this amazing network. And everybody that's out there listening to this, if you're not building a network, you know, and by the way, LinkedIn, hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> has there ever been... An easier way to build a network. Oh my God. And it's free. That that's, I mean, it's basically free. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, when, when COVID started, so, uh, you know, you may not know this about me, but my, my, when I started my consulting company, my business model, and it, it, that's a stretch calls it, calling it a business model, but what I was doing to get revenue and to, and to get clients is I was doing speaking engagements. 
I'd go mm-hmm. on a speaking engagement and I'd walk out of there with one to three clients, sometimes four, right. you know, depending on, and, and that would be a sales training client or an individual coaching client or, or maybe some marketing. And then I had eight speaking engagements scheduled for April and May and COVID happened. Yeah. Now talk about getting punched in the face and, you know, I don't want to sing my, you know, feel no, sorry for me because everyone got punched in the face, but like, right. I was like, holy crap, what am right. I going to do? Right. And after 24 hours of feeling sorry for myself, that's when I started that group, the PDP group that we're part of. And it's 21 weeks in a row now. So, and I did it because I I realized that when we're done, when this is all over, it's, it's going to be the relationships that you have. That's going to make, that's going to help you be successful. 100%. And it has never been easier to produce content as well. I don't care if two people watch a video that you, you do or, or 2000 or 2 million. You can produce content today. You know, in, in the short time that we've been home, I have produced 26 videos for our company's website, ancrevenue.com. If people want to go there, ancrevenue.com. A I is produced, in Alan, N is in Nancy, C is in Kat. You got it. Exactly okay. right. Yep. And on there, there are 26 videos that I shot ranging from five minutes to up to 30 minutes. You've got former Disney executives. You know, the guy that used to run the Magic Kingdom. Dan Cockrell is on there, you know? Wow. Um, and then there are people, there's a guy who owns a coffee shop in Ohio. And you hear what this guy <laughs> did to adjust quickly to COVID. Incredible. Just like your group, we had, a, we had a group going, a mastermind group going for a period of time. You know, we get together on Zoom. And we started exchanging this, but I picked up some of the guests there. But then I got sales experts. And then I got people who just had good advice and practical things for people to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and just 26 videos. But my point is, you know, we can sit around and feel sorry for ourselves or we can do something, you right. know? And so that's one of the things we did. I also wrote an ebook that you'll find on the website. It's called The Five Ways Selling Has Changed, you know, as a result of the pandemic. Yeah, so, let, let's get into that because we mentioned that yeah. you know, in our pre-discussion here. If you don't mind, you know, kind of go over, if you, if you can go over briefly, what, what do you think those five ways uh, are and what that ebook uh, can, can help people with? Well, f- first of all, it is that transition from being a salesperson to being a business partner, right? Right. You know, you, you have got to, you have got to be a, a resource to people. Okay. So number one is when you walk into a, a place of business, if you're a salesperson, I don't care if you sell, um, you know, newspaper advertising or widgets. Okay. If you're the top widget salesperson, you're in lots of places that use the widget. So when you walk into somebody who uses widgets, you've got experience from someplace else and you can apply, you can say, Hey, you know, I know this guy, Alan, he uses his widgets this way. You might think about, and the guy, oh, wow, what a great idea. All right. You didn't sell anything, but you shared an idea. Right. Now, you know, that, so that's number one. Number two is, you know, is, is showing some compassion. How are things going? I heard a sales quote unquote expert on a, on a, uh, on a, a seminar webinar recently who said, don't ask people how they're doing because you don't want to get into that. And I thought, <laughs> what? That's what he said on the <laughs> seminar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, you know, I said, well, no, but you, got, you have to ask people, you know? So show some compassion. Be willing to listen as much as you talk. Even though we know in sales we're supposed to do that, you got to do a lot more listening, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, so that's, that's one of the points we bring up. We also bring up the point uh, of this content thing, okay? Yeah. Uh, if you are in any business whatsoever, why can't you be a content leader? Again, if you're selling widgets, why wouldn't you use Zoom to do Zoom webinars, mm-hmm. you know, for people and tell them how they can utilize that more, you know? Right. Two of the examples I give in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this little ebook. I live here on an island in Vermont. If anybody knows Lake Champlain, we live- An we actual live in- island you live on. Yes, we live in an actual island that's connected by a sandbar to the Vermont side. I have to take a boat to get to New York, okay? We're in the middle of the lake. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we've got, you know, we're, we're, we're a beautiful small town. Uh, this time of year, it's usually hopping a little quieter this year, right? Mm-hmm. But we've got two businesses that everybody depends upon. One is Killer Bay Variety, which is kind of like a general grocery store. The other is Wally's Bagel, okay? <laughs> Where my 17-year-old, my 17-year-old w- works there. By the way, another Jersey guy, the Jersey connection just keeps on. Going, and right? the so, bagels, of course he came from Jersey. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course, of course. But anyway, overnight, they both had to switch to e-commerce, right? Overnight, yes. both had to add an aspect to their website so you could order stuff and pick it up on the curb, okay? But it was overnight, and literally, both of them added, you know, it's not exactly you know, Amazon stuff, okay? Right. But neither one of them had a way to order groceries or bagels on their websites 
you know, on one day and the next day they learn how to do that and they, they adapted. And yep. so the other thing I talk about in this book is the, the, I, the, 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 the thought of nimble. Okay. Uh, when I worked in the Boston area, guess when I landed in Boston, 2008. Remember what happened in 2008, Alan? It was a little bit of a, something happened to the housing market, right? <laughs> the economy just fell down on top of us, yes. you know? And here we had four daily newspapers, a group of magazines, a group of weekly papers. What are we going to do? We got nimble. We got nimble, you know? And first thing we did is we put on a, 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 a bunch of workshops called uh, Weathering the Storm, you know? Wow. And we brought college professors in and people from all over the Boston area, you know, to talk about weathering the storm. So, you know, nimble is what it's all about. You know, absolutely all about that. And then finally, one of the things you'll read about in the book is, is taking a page right out of Jim Collins' Good to Be Great book, okay? And that is, what are you going to stop doing to do something else? You know, you can't do new things if you don't stop doing some old things that really are, are not necessarily good habits, like, you know, that book that's the number one seller right now about habits. Getting out of things that we, we, we are just so used to doing because we've always done it. Stopping that stuff doing something new. If you want to have a podcast like Alan, you're going to have to stop doing something in order, or you're going to have to be out here, you know, at the time of night we're doing this, right? To, to right. Get it done. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, 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 it brings up a point uh, that I actually, I did a, a podcast a couple of weeks ago and I posted it. It actually dropped today, but a guy, a guy named Benjamin Manley, he talks about uh, what he calls the Friday habit. And it's basically his, his quote is, I love his quote is, you, you got to stop putting out fires to kill the dragon. You can't, you can't run around all day in your business and putting out fires. Meanwhile, the dragon is still behind you the whole time and you never, you never kill him. Yeah. So he has this process to do that. It's really cool. But the point is, if you're a salesperson, if you're a business owner and you're doing something that is not producing income or moving your business forward, exactly. you need to stop doing it. Right. And we get right. so distracted today. Like you can literally, you know, be in the middle of an email, all of a sudden a notification from Instagram pops up and all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, you're still on your phone. That stuff, you got to stop. You know, right. if, exactly. if you want to be successful and, and a friend of mine, Marcus Chan from LinkedIn calls it IPAs, income producing activities. So I yeah. always remember beer. If I'm, if I'm not having a beer, if I'm not doing an IPA, right. um, I stop doing it. And I try to do something that's going to at least do something that's going to, either try to generate me money or move my business forward. And, and it's, a good, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there are things that generate income that are not direct, you know, they're indirect. And, and that's why I say, you know, everybody can be a, a bit of a content creator and we yes. go back to LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn's a great place to just share some content and, and, uh, and, and build some following and stuff like that. Right. So, and yeah, don't be absolutely. afraid to share content at all. I mean, just don't, just no. do it. No, absolutely. Just so. do it. Yeah. Yep. 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 You know, it's, uh, it, it's really interesting when we put this, this uh, ebook out there, we did a couple of national webinars and, you know, it, it, it's making sense to people and it's fun, Alan, that I'm on different, different frequencies, right? We all listen to different podcasts or read, read different things. I mean, if you're seeing the word nimble pop up again, uh, right. not again, but I'm seeing it. I'm seeing that word pop up. Nimble and pivot. Those are two words that I started pivot. using. Pivot. Oh, that's the big, on. that's yeah. the big COVID word. Pivot. Big <laughs> word, right? Nimble and pivot, you know, and, and then some of the things we've talked about. So it's, it's great to know that we're on the right, that we're singing the right song. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, when you put Floyd down, I, I, didn't I hear something, something else going on? Uh, well, you know, we, we, your, your, your story brand and, 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 uh, and I love, I mean, I'm, I'm taking your readers to a place maybe you don't take their listeners to the place you don't take them to, but. You know, story brand, Donald Miller and the, and yep. the whole uh, story brand thing. Uh, again, story, right? <clears throat> so let me tell you, show you what happens when a ventriloquist is literally handed something. A fabulous guy named Dennis Acosta is a, is a uh, Air Force retiree. Two years ago, he got interested in puppet making. He hands me this puppet. We actually have a ventriloquist convention, believe it or not. I believe that. So <laughs> last year in our ventriloquist convention, there's a museum in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. I'm on the board of. Uh, um, and uh, he hands me something because uh, I, uh, I was given this uh, guy and put, put in my hands. Yes. Good day, sir. How are you, sir? Yes. Nice to see you, sir. Nice yes. to see you. And, and, who, and who, you look very dapper tonight. And who are you? Thank you, sir. I am the, uh, the major general, sir. Yes. Nice to major see you. Major general. Yes, sir. Yes. You're Did actually you a sergeant. Military discounts when you buy something in a store? <laughs> yes, sir. Costco, <laughs> Shands Club. 
Oh, no, 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 no. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what's interesting about this guy, yeah, is I've had him for about a year, but I still have to develop the character a bit more. Yes, so. So the voice came to me right away. Uh huh. But you know, we have to tell a story about this guy. Yes, so as a ventriloquist, you're always working on on characterizations. That's right, sir. Yes, yeah. But I just love. I don't know if you can see. If I come back a little bit, he stands so perfectly and bends at the waist, and he's really kind of fun. And Dennis, like if, if you were a builder building a house on spec, he built this puppet on spec. Yes, he did. So that's right. Yeah. So I Adam, like his voice. He did a nice job with his voice. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I'll take credit. We'll take credit. Yes, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Got your medals there. Yes, I do. Yeah, we'll have to go to YouTube to see it. Yes, they will. Sir. Yes. They will have yeah. to definitely go to YouTube after they listen to this on on uh-huh. Apple iTunes or Spotify. I'm sure. So what's kind of cool is you know you talk about more stuff to do with the uh, with the major general here. I have to uh, I have to now write his whole background uh, story. And you know you talk about age. I think I can reach it here without getting too far from the camera. I have my comedy notebook here, and inside this comedy notebook, I'll show it to you on screen, is a copy of a dot matrix printout. Uh-huh. That, uh, actually, see how we're talking about being old? Yes. That, comes from, that comes from Jeff Dunham's uh, dot matrix uh, printer, and uh, <laughs> he gave me this character questionnaire, but it's great, because when you talk about personas, like for digital marketing, yes, it's all in here. What's their secret wish? Uh, what do they want to be? What are their convictions and apathies? What current car do they, what's their, their wish car? What is your wish car? A tank, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Good. Story, so maybe story we'll say good night to Alan. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night. Nice meeting you. Uh-huh. Good meeting you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. So I, you know, Hey, like I said, you, you don't have to be one person, but, um, it's fun. Yes. A story, you know, th- that's the biggest thing I, I try to train. And so probably my favorite part of my book is, is, is if you don't know how to tell a story, you're not going to be a salesperson. You're just not. No. Uh, you, you'll be a mediocre salesperson at best. The, you know, the, if you can incorporate story and, and analogies and metaphors to describe products and, and, you know, even with story brand where, you know, mo- the biggest mistake companies make is they think they're the hero. They're not the right. hero. The, the customer is the hero. They're the guide. The company is the guide to get yeah. them to solve their problem. Right. Right. And uh, yeah, so I, I encourage everyone listening, check out Don Miller's book, The Story Brand, but check out my book. I talk about you know the, uh, how to use story in, in selling. So, But story, Absolutely. story, story, it, it's, uh, it's critical. It's so, so funny you say that because my, my, my beautiful wife of, of, of uh, 38 years... She uh, is a very literal and kind and good person. But when she's around a guy like me, who the story's never the same twice, because yeah. right now <laughs> we're always kind of adjusting the story just a little bit to make it a bit more exciting and a bit more and entertaining. Maybe- yeah. You know what? Uh, <laughs> as, a, as a writer, what my favorite writer, Stephen King, and he wrote something, he goes, you can never trust the story from a writer because they're always going to exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, his book on writing story better. <laughs> his book on writing, by the way, is I think the best book on writing. I agree. I've, I've actually read it twice. The, the on writing book is brilliant. Yep, I, yep. I agree with that. Yep. That and the book Bird by Bird is is both those books on writing are just uh, repeat reads. They're really, yes. really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are at I don't know forty minutes or so or some something around there. So um, this has been awesome, Al. I'm, I I can talk to you and your friends uh, for for a while tonight, but. I think we got to wrap it up for for our for our listeners. But I thought we were, I thought we were going to get a question of the day. Were we not? Oh, gonna get thank a question you very much. You know, you're you're very good at reminding me of things. <laughs> well, it's all right, but you know, you tell me you're going to give me a question, dude. I, I get ready for it. I am so. doing the quest. So the segment, and I, I should have even mentioned this at the beginning, and I totally forgot because I was so excited about the about the about Floyd coming on the show. Um, <laughs> we we have a question uh, that comes in. It's called Ask Alan. People email me questions. If I choose your question. And we uh, we asked the question. Uh, you get a free copy, signed copy of my book. So, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. So this week's question uh, comes from Jose, and I chose it because he does. He is from New Jersey. Doesn't oh, say where. Jose, Jersey. you're ready. So you're in. Two so Jersey two guys. Books. <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's a great question because this is. I'm going to pose this to you, Al, because of sure. all you're selling, not only you're selling experience, but training your guys to go out there and and do what they're doing. Uh, he said, "What are the, some of the best cold calling tips you can give me?" Yeah, absolutely. That's his question. Jose in New Jersey. Well, Jose, I got to tell you something. First of all, um, 
you have to understand one thing about cold calling and selling. It's a numbers game, 100%. So I don't know what you're, you're cold calling for or what you, um, what your net, you know, result is going to be. But first of all, what's your goal? What do you want to attain? So we're going to stick with widgets again, right, Alan? Mm -hmm. If you want to sell a thousand widgets in a month, how many cold calls do you have to make to connect to get? First of all, how many calls do you have to make to get appointments from your cold calls? And then how many appointments have to turn into sales? So you got to start with the math, first of all, Jose. Secondly, mm -hmm. when you cold call, it's scary, dude. You have got to get ready for being a little bit afraid of being rejected, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to get beyond that. There's a great guy out there, a great resource. He's called Mr. Inside Sales. I'm quoting him a lot here, so I'm going to give credit where credit's due. But, you know, you've got to be prepared. you got to have a script. You've got to, assuming that you're doing this over the phone, maybe you're doing it in person, but you got to have also with the script, you have to have responses, right? Because if I say to Alan, would you like to buy widgets? And he says, I can't afford that inventory right now. we got to talk to him about that and figure out how we're going to get that done, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got to have, be ready with responses. And then we've got to know that not every call is going to be a good call, but when the good ones come, you're going to know it. And then he uses all this Mr. Inside Sales, I'm quoting him directly. He says, you have to smile and dial, you know, mm -hmm. when you are selling and when you are cold calling, you have to smile and dial. Alan, have you ever called a customer service center and gotten the most miserable human being on the face of the earth on the other end of the, other end of the phone? It's, it happens quite often, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you know? You can't see them. How do you know? Right. Because you, you can hear a smile over the phone. Yes, exactly right. I had a problem with a pay-per-view on Comcast a few weeks ago called the Xfinity guy, the nicest guy in the world. Yep. You hear it from the very beginning. So, Jose, take those tips, man. They're really good. Go check out Mr. Inside Sales. He's fabulous. Yep. And I would add to that, you know, what, what you're talking about is, is been tried and true. It's, it's, it's been proven that that's what you need to do. But also in, in today's world, if you can... You're going to have a script, but you don't, don't, please don't read it word for word. You got to, oh, you God, gotta, no. No, yeah, no, no, no. You yeah. have to be, we're going back to nimble again. Yep. You got to be nimble. You know, you got, you've got to uh, understand who you're talking to and change your script on the fly to that customer over the phone. You know, yeah. if you start everything where you sound like a salesman right out of the box, you're, you're, you're behind the, you're not only behind the eight ball, you're behind the entire, you know, rack of balls because they're just not going to listen to you, especially today. So 100%. be nimble. You know, cut to the chase. Uh, I, I, I was listening to a guy the other day. He, he started his cold calls and say, hey, Peter, you remember me? And the guy was like, no. He goes, well, this is a cold call. That's why you don't remember me. What do you think of that? And the guy would always <laughs> laugh on the other side. <laughs> and that's I'm how he started it. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. It was this young 24-year-old kid. And I was listening to him. And I'm like, you know what? That's, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he, everybody laughed. No one was pissed off at him. Oh, I love it. That's great. <laughs> That's absolutely great. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there you go. You got to be creative with that stuff and have fun. You got to have fun. You absolutely. You know, and, and to the managers out there, yes, it's a numbers game, but it's also a quality game. You know, I'd rather have someone, you know, if you're, if you're making them make a hundred calls, actually wor don't worry about the calls as much. Worry about what they're doing with the calls. Worry about the exactly. volume. What? Well, that's it. Yeah. You know, it, it, I'd rather have a guy who makes 50 good calls and, and, and hits the volume than a guy who makes 100 crappy calls and, and doesn't yes. hit the volume. Exactly so right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's that, but again, what's the end game? What, what's your target? How are you going to get there? Right, you, exactly. So, yeah. All right, well, yeah. thank you very much for reminding me of the question. <laughs> thank you Absolutely. for reminding me to hit, to hit the record button on our Friday, <laughs> our Friday chat. Okay. Can I give out the, uh, the, the, the uh, info again? Yeah, that's uh, our, our company get website. To that. So tell us how people can can find you, find the ANC website, because I, I encourage people to watch those videos and to download that ebook you were talking about. So tell them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so ancrevenue.com is the company. Personally, my website is just algetler.com, A-L-G-E-T-L-E-R. LinkedIn, it's Al Getler. Facebook, it's Al Getler. Everything's Al Getler, Alan. It's pretty easy because there's not many people out there with my name. So yeah. hit me up at Al Getler, any of those places, including my website. I also want to urge you to go on to YouTube, search my name, I uh, look for some of the videos we did years ago with some of the great people who are still out there today, like Michael Hyatt and, and Nancy Duarte that are, that are you know, causing things to happen. Some pretty cool videos out there on YouTube as well. Awesome. Yeah, so it's Al Gettler, G-E-T-L-E-R. Just, just in case you didn't hear that, uh, check them out. Uh, I promise you won't be disappointed. Al, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This is one of the, Alan, the more cheers, fun my podcasts. Friend. Yeah. And uh, 
for folks uh, to, to send me a question, you're going to send it to my email, Alan, A-L-L-A-N, it's a weird spelling, A-L-L-A-N, at allanger.com, A-L-L-A-N-G-E-R.com. Allanger.com is my website. You can get my book there. You can do anything you want. But send me a question. If, you, if your question is picked, you do get a free copy of my book. This has Thanks. been Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. We are uh, heading into uh, week 17, 18, 16. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. We're having a good time. Everyone, thanks for joining us, and we will see you again next time.